revival of the past is really part of today's trend. So from cuisine to music, lifestyle product to, to fashion, all trends have a life circle. So we thought, what better to do than to focus on fashion, which where the, the trends are really pronounced and the cycles come and go, and we're all very familiar with them. To me, nowadays, it's not so much of a strong identity as before. The 40s was this, the 50s was this, 60s was, you know. At the moment, I think it's kind of a bit lost, mm -hmm. and people just keep repeating, you know, regurgitating things. It's, it's not a trend setting as much as before. It's because of commercial reason, financial mm -hmm. reason. A mm -hmm. lot of young designers don't get the chance, so to speak, to go to a bigger fashion house because they can't risk for them to do something outrageous and not sell. Well, I was going to say that I don't think that this nostalgic kind of, you know, thing is actually trend-based. I was going to say that it's actually necessity. Like, people, you know, because of the economic <coughs> downturn, you know, people have to think cheap. I think the most question I get asked as a fashion editor is, like, what's in trend this season? And for the past eight years that I've been at Vogue, it's always to me the same. Print, checks, white, black is repeating itself all the time to a point it's like every season is like dandy, masculine, how to dress a woman masculine, you know. So I think that's why I feel now is lacking of creativity in terms of designers are not daring enough anymore because they need to sell. I mean, it is also obviously the dissemination of like information and trends, right? I mean like blogging and social media and all that kind of stuff has an incredible effect on yeah. all of this. And also like I think back then it was you know, there was like maybe one trend that was happening. You know, it was like, you know, suddenly we're wearing big skirts and that was yeah. like the one thing that everyone's focused on or like, oh, now it's like knee length. Whereas now we have like hundreds of trends happening yeah. simultaneously. It's not just one thing to focus on. I mean, it seems the strongest trends that always didn't, you know, they weren't necessarily dictated by brands, but they seem to be coming out of subcultures of music, whatever, grunge or punk or... I haven't really seen that, I guess, since grunge, really, which is like 20 years ago. As I said, it's all to do with money, whether you like it or not. It's, it really is, you know? And designers have such pressure that we don't even know about because they need to sell, but they need to be creative to a certain point. You can't be that creative because it won't sell. What you say is very interesting because all those trends, like grunge, punk, whatever, are rooted in a actually small community in a certain city, for example, Seattle, London. And at the time, there was no internet. People were not flooded with the same level of information. So grassroots, indigenous trend could be created because people maybe had less influence. In China, it's amazing. They are really active on, uh, online, obviously. Everybody around the world is seeing the same thing. So I think the more we go, the less we'll see. How will this trickle down to the creative community? Not for what it represents only, but for a personal connection. And people, I mean, we, we've done some research and we saw research on that, and we're writing projects mm -hmm. on that. So I think, as any trends in China, it can grow rapidly and, and in large numbers. So there's hope here. And 